here with you today to answer a question that I get asked all the time. How did a business started by a 14-year-old girl, the singular hopes and dreams of a 14-year-old girl, go from zero to $250 million in revenue in only four short years? Good morning, America. The Today Show, Yahoo Finance, all wanted to capture the story of the success. They were astounded by what was happening. Now, I want to introduce you to my 14-year-old daughter, Bella. She came to us and said, um, I want you to buy me a car for my 16th birthday. And we looked at her and said, uh, no, I don't know what family you think you're from, <laughs> but in our family, we certainly are not going to purchase you a car for your 16th birthday. But hey, guess what? You can work for it. My husband and I were both uh, the type of people who we worked hard. We put ourselves through college. And I was raised by a single mom who taught me work ethic. And we said, Bella, hey, guess what? Uh, you're going to have to do this for yourself, but we'll help you. So she said, what can I do to earn money? And we said, uh, how about babysitting? She'd babysat before and encouraged her to continue babysitting so she could get a car for her 16th birthday. Well, after uh, quite a bit of babysitting, she came back. She'd earned about $350, and she said, um, at the rate I'm going, it is literally going to take me forever to have enough money to earn a car. And we said, what if you start a business? How about you start a business? And she looked at us like we were literally crazy, and she said, um, start a business? Okay, well, what can I do? So we began to research ideas together. We, um, we searched online, we talked to friends of things that, were, that they really liked, and Bella and I had always designed little beaded necklaces and jewelry when she was little. And so when we stumbled upon glass lockets and charms, we knew that we had an amazing fit. Now, we took her $350 and we matched her, and with $750, Origami Owl custom jewelry was born. We didn't invent glass lockets. They've existed since the 17th century. In fact, these Bella and I found on the streets of Paris in the flea markets and antique shops. Lockets of old carried little memories of a loved one, including pictures or a lock of hair. What we did do was reinvented a timeless classic, adding the ability to customize little hand stamp plates, custom uh, custom charms picked by each individual customer, telling the story of a mother who is a survivor of breast cancer who picked out the charms of hope to give her comfort during a hard time, or the story of a mother of tw twins. Bella walked each customer through a really special experience. They would literally take a tweezer and go through this little aisle and pick every single charm out they connected with and put them in a little glass charm votive. And as they did that, they shared their story. Bella would ask them, okay, well, why are you picking this? Why are you picking that? And they would share why it was significant to them. It was at this period of time that Bella came home and shared an incredible story with me. She had been uh, working one day, uh, showing her lockets and charms. And what was amazing is the connection that she felt to a particular customer. A woman came and picked out two sunflower charms and gave them to Bella and, um, and chose the locket that she wanted. Bella placed them inside and said, you know, you might want to get a third charm. I had taught her that in visual composition, one or three or five are better than two. The woman politely declined and she said, um, I'll just take the two. Bella inquired and said, um, okay, well, you know, what's the significance of the two, sunfla two sunflowers for you? And this woman continued to share with my 14-year-old daughter that she had just lost twin baby girls. She wanted to place these little sunflowers in a locket as a way to keep her babies close to her. Bella talked to me about how her eyes locked with this mother and as tears streamed down both of her fa their faces, they shared a moment of raw emotional connection. There are so many stories like that that we hear, where these little miniature charms that share someone's story are so impactful to the people building it. Stories of 
hopes, of dreams, of worries, of faith, of family. And one of my favorites, people will put little charms in just as a little affirmation, something to look down on that makes them happy or makes them think of something that they're trying to achieve in the day. So though we started at little home parties and um, boutiques, here's what we noticed. People started talking about Origami Owl. There was literally such a momentum and a buzz. People were sharing Bella's story and they felt so connected to it. Why? Not just because she was trying to reach her dream of getting a car by her 16th birthday, but also because they were connecting in a time, in a digital age, where connection is tough to come by. On, on uh, Black Friday of 2010, we took a massive leap of faith and we signed a 60-day kiosk for a mall in Chandler, Arizona. And I have to tell you, we were scared to death. Mall kiosk rent, in case you're wondering, is really expensive. And we didn't have the money at the time to buy both the supplies for um, and the lockets and charms and pay the rent. And so we went to a family and friend and said, hey, a family friend, we said, hey, we've got a great idea. We're going to rent this mall kiosk. It's going to be over the holidays and it's going to be amazing. We shared the success that we had had at other little holiday boutiques and craft fairs at schools. And so um, he pitched in, we signed this lease, and I got to tell you, we were scared to death that we weren't going to be able to pay him back. And yet there was great success. People came in literally droves, coming to the mall kiosk. In fact, the mall literally said to us, they wanted us to extend our lease because they realized that we were actually bringing customers to the mall. Bella's little business at 14 years old. Well, let me tell you what happened next. So a lot of women throughout the country had received lockets for Christmas, right? And for the holidays. And so January of 2011, Bella's phone starts blowing up. Literally, this was a genius idea. We had put her cell phone number on every business card and put it in the little box. A little did we know that was not the best idea at the time. Um, but we had put her little card inside every box of every locket sold. Well, her little flip phone, her little razor flip phone, phone started blowing up January 2011. And here's what people were saying. Do you have a store in our area? What? No, we don't have a store in your area. Um, would you be interested in franchising? People were asking, hey, I want to I pay it forward and create one of these meaningful gifts for someone in my life. Wanted to carry Origami Owl in their stores. So there was a natural demand for the product which ties back to one thing. People felt connected to what we had. They felt connected and, and really believed and wanted to continue to support Bella. So we did something extremely unconventional. Um, we, by in January, we actually had enough money. Bella had enough money not just to buy a used car, but she had enough money to purchase a brand new car. Now, she was only 14, so she wasn't driving anywhere. And we talked about stopping there. She'd reached her goal, right? It was, uh, she'd reached it. But we knew that what we had was so special. And we had hoped that if we duplicated the model that we had created, that other women and young entrepreneurs could have the same success that Bella did. Uh, we held on tight, and with the help of Two friends and two family members, we set out to defy the odds and launched into social selling. What this gave people the opportunity to do was they could sign up for Origami Owl and they would receive all of the tools and resources to sell our jewelry just had Bella had. And it really was then when Bella's purpose changed after, and imagine, she's 14. And yet she could literally interface with women three and four times her age. She was growing in confidence. She was growing in the ability to understand what people were going through. And more than anything, she was learning work ethic. So after talking about it, um, we knew it was the right thing to do. And our purpose then shifted from Bella just having a car to being able to impact the lives of others. We knew that countless women had hopes and dreams of their own and that youth just like Bella could learn work ethic. Well, we embarked on a pretty mighty journey, not, not knowing what would happen. 
and we couldn't even believe what would happen next. We had 60,000 women and a few good men and a lot of youth join Origami Owl in the next few years. These people were finding success and it was incredible to see this little thing that Bella and I had started with no capital investment, with no business plan, but a genuine intention to make a difference in the world, a genuine intention to connect people to what mattered most. This was a time during her high school years, and I think now looking back at what she sacrificed because she felt something. She felt the emotional connection of, of, um, of working with others, of hearing their story. Uh, I think when I think about uh, today, everything in our world pulls us away from human connection. We literally pay at the pump, it's so easy. Amazon will deliver anything we need right to our door at a moment's notice. We bank online, we don't even have to talk to people and we can exist every single day and go about our business by simply emailing and texting. And yet, people yearn for emotional connection. Human connection and love are, are literally basic needs of every, every human being, of every soul. So uh, when businesses are successful, what happens? Investors, they come out of the woodwork. They see your success and what do they want? A part of it, right? So in, um, in 2015, we developed a relationship with investors and we actually received a absolutely ridiculous, life-changing sum of money in our bank accounts. I gotta tell you, we could have bought houses on the East Coast, the West Coast, jets, whatever we wanted, and not only that, had financial security for the rest of our lives. But when they came in, things changed. Uh, we began to lose connection with our customers and with our team members, our employees who were so connected to our mission, our purpose, and our core values. The business began to suffer and it became about one single thing. I bet you can imagine what it is, money. Now, there's nothing wrong with money. Everyone needs to make it. We all need to make a living. But when it became the focus, Instead of making a difference in people's lives, helping them reach their dreams, and helping people connect in a world that needs more connection, it did suffer. And we made a decision that I will tell you is the most difficult decision I've ever made in my entire life. We gave back the money. We sacrificed the security, and even though every financial advisor told us that it isn't what we should do, I thought, about, I thought about our designers. Those are the, the women who had become a part of Origami Al to sell our product. I thought about the youth. I thought about a story of a, a mother who had paid off her student loans after so many years, of making house payments, of people who finally qualified for a house, of paying for dance lessons they couldn't afford to pay for. I thought about some of our young people who were earning college tuition. They were setting aside money for college tuition. We've had many youth who have purchased their own cars, their cell phones, their laptops, school trips. And even though we could have had that security, I will tell you that not a day goes by. I don't regret that decision because each one of us has one life to live. And I had worked to teach my daughter that what mattered more than anything wasn't money, but was the way that we connect with other human beings, the way that we could make a difference and help people have the success that she did in life. That was a tough lesson for a young girl to live. And we've had so many ups and downs since. We've had plenty of challenges, but it's all been worth it. Now, if I were to look back there are some things that I would tell Bella that I've learned today that I didn't know when we started. I would tell her, this is gonna be hard. There's gonna be days where you're gonna wanna quit. You're gonna be accused of things that you didn't do and you're gonna feel like you wanna shrink. You're gonna feel defeated 
And in those moments, you're going to have to find a way to get back up. You're going to feel joy, too, in the happiness of touching and reaching other people's lives. But above all else, no matter what happens, you can make a difference in the world. There isn't um, a doubt in my mind that each one of us can. We have breath in our lungs and a life to fulfill the one mission that we've been given. Now, connecting with others is something that oftentimes you're probably not thinking about in your daily life. However, I will tell you that it brings a gratitude, changes a business, causes momentum, creates energy like nothing I have personally ever experienced. Now, you might be asking, did Bella get that Jeep? Well, she did uh, on her 16th birthday as tears streamed down her face. Uh, a white Jeep named Alice. And if you're wondering if she liked it, she liked it a lot. Thank you. <laughs>